I've moved the speaker wires from the CXA 800.1 we are now connected to the key 500.1, and of course, the tone, the test tone that we're doing, I moved the RCA plugs from the CXA 800.1 back here to the key 500.1, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a dyno run on this key 500.1. But before I walk around and hit that, Tim's giving me a good reminder, it's 825. If you're new to the channel, you're just tuned in, or if you're an old schooler and you forgot, we got five minutes to enter the contest tonight. Remember, tonight's link is kicker.fun forward slash dyno 500. So go hit that link before 8.30 to get entered in the contest tonight because the grand prize winner is actually gonna walk off with a key 500.1 amplifier, which is pretty dang cool. Wow, that is cool. And remember that's D-Y-N-O, not yeah. D-I-N-O. <laughs> Because I get that yeah. all the time when people ask me about dyno. It's D-Y-N-O. Well, D-I-N-O, that actually turned into oil so you can drive your car. D-Y-N-O is how you label your stuff or find out how much amp power your amplifier makes. That's right. We're, we're testing power to the wheels tonight, folks. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and the monkey flips the switch. I'm gonna turn my remote turn back, my remote leads back on, so everything's firing up. I'll make sure my amps turn on and they stabilize. Everything looks good. And so now what we're gonna do, let me set the min-max meter back up. So there's the max. Let me turn the amplifier dyno meter back on. And I'll get it into the correct mode. And I know this is, you know, it's one of those things doing this live, there's a lot of things that you may not see, uh, you know, when you watch an amplifier dyno video like Big D puts together that is uh, very, I'll use the word polished. There's a lot of these setups, like you don't see him actually setting up the gain on the AMM1 to make sure everything works properly. There's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes to actually get those amp dyno videos produced. And I gotta give a shout out. Uh, you do a lot of them and uh, Derek, I watch every single one of them. They're all great. Thank you. Yeah, you're right, Kip. That is part of the setup process, and I do not include it in the video just because it's redundant, but you obviously want to ensure that the amp is matched to the head unit. In this case, you're using a signal generator. It's a little different, but still make sure that they're matched. So I'll, I'll let you go ahead and let's see what this key 500.1 will do. Absolutely. So here we go. So the monkey flipped the switch, the amplifier's on, we've got everything set up, and we're going to go ahead and ramp up the, the uh, output voltage from the uh, tone generator, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back down. Wow, 643 is what I see. 643 watts into one ohm, and that little amplifier, it drew 91 amps of current. That was the total current draw, so I'm going to go do a reset on this. And we'll do a reset on this. And we'll do it again. Crank it up. There we go, clipping light came on. On the amplifier dyno, 653 watts. And current pull, 91 amps. That's not and bad from a 500 watt amp, Kip. <laughs> no, and, and here's the thing. You, you know, I, I don't want him to necessarily do it right now, but the, the 500.1, literally, it's the size of my hand. I mean, we're talking about a 500-watt amplifier with an integrated DSP that removes those challenges that are present in a factory system, which is what the key amplifier line is designed for, is you put this into the factory vehicle, it's designed to take up to a 40-volt input signal. So it doesn't matter what's in that factory vehicle, you can take in the speaker leads and tie right into the RCA plugs and go right into this amplifier. There's no, you don't want a line output converter. There's no no need for any other path or object to be in the path between the signal and the amplifier. The key is designed to take it. And then it has a setup routine. There are tones you download from kicker.com and you go through some test routines and it electrically measures the signal at that amplifier and then it re-EQs and adjusts that so that if you're looking at your car, and a lot of factory cars do, is either they're taking all the bass away to begin with, they just don't let you have any real low frequency because they're doing that to protect the speakers in the car. Or as you turn the volume up on your radio, they'll start rolling the bass off so that it's also protecting the speakers in the car. What you have to understand from the factory standpoint, they just want the speakers and the amp and the radio in the car to last three years and 36,000 miles and you don't have any problem. And blown up speakers is a problem. So by removing low frequency, they're removing the problems that they think or they know could be present in blown speakers. And so the key amplifier sees all that electrically 
it has kind of like its own built-in RTA and looks at all this and goes, okay, I need to re-queue and do all this so that now all this low frequency bass that the factory's taken away from you, I'm gonna give it back to you. Because other than that bass roll off and things like that, you know, factory radios aren't the, the trash bins that they used to be back in the 80s and early 90s. Factory radios today are actually pretty decent. They just don't have RCA plugs on them and you gotta deal with the equalization and things that the factory has put into there. If you work around those things, it's a great source unit. It's a touch screen, it's got your steering wheel controls, USB, Bluetooth, aux in. I mean, it's got everything you need. So the key line amplifiers let you integrate and just do what you want, which is add more power, re-EQ the system to get that bass back that the factory took away. And the fact that it does all that in a box that's about the size of my hand, that's pretty impressive. And as you can see on the meter, it exceeds its 500 watt rating easily. It does about 653 watts. Yeah, that, that's really good. I mean, uh, in my test, I like to see rated power plus about 10%, and I'm happy. In this case, we're well above that. And just to show it's not a fluke, I'll do it again. I reset the clamp meter and I reset the uh, SMD meter. We'll do another run up here real quick. There you go, 643. So 640, and again, drew 91 amps of current through the yeah, that's, uh, across that's the pretty clamp consistent meter. right across pretty the board. Consistent. Kip. Yeah. And just and just and just for those out there in the cheap seats, we'll do it one more time. <laughs> So here we go. Clipping light indicator is on on the meter. We'll back everything back down. Again, 642 watts, 91 amps of current draw. So as you can see, the little 500.1 key amplifier, does it make 500 watts? It absolutely makes 500 watts. And if 10% is your standard, so you'd say 550. So I would say at 640, 650, we're definitely above what you consider a, a fair rating standard.